back to another edition of Bible Alive. I'm Dwight Hall, and this is my co-host, Pastor Mark Howard. Glad to have you here today, Mark. Yeah, Dwight, it's always great to be here. we got a lot of great stuff to go over today. And uh, today, we're going to be finishing the second series of your message, Soldiers. And uh, it kind of had me on the edge of my seat, even though I've listened to it before. And there's a lot of practical things that you'll get out of it. Now, if you haven't seen the first episode, you can get onto it on our website, www.remnantmediacenter.com, and you can watch that. But we need to get into it right now and see what the finishing of that story is, Pastor Mark. So without further delay, expect to be blessed. God has told us that the prayer meeting indicates the true, the true life of the church. As the pulse is to the body is the way it's put. The attendance of prayer meeting. So you, you can go into a church and there could be a thousand people on Sabbath. You come to prayer meeting and there's 20, that's a dead church. Okay? I mean, listen, brothers and sisters, everything that we've been talking about in prophecy is coming to play now. Lord, everything that I am and everything that I have is yours. If you want, if you want me to get rid of it, if I need to let go of it, then I'll do it. You're putting it on the altar. We're quick to get into conversations about stuff and be consumed with that, but very slow to get into conversations about the Lord. You probably relate to that. You've probably had those conversations about your cell phone, about your car, about who knows what. But how often does even an, an Adventist church member come with? I, I mean, this happens in, in, in my minister's meetings. I mean, I talk, it's funny that there's this thing that goes on it goes on everywhere, even, even, even amongst the pastors. It's kind of a little joke between the PC and the Mac guys, you know? The Mac computers, the Apple guys, and, and, and the PC guys. And it's kind of a little joke that goes back and forth. But sometimes I hear more about whether you... In fact, I had a guy come to me at, this last, uh, at our last minister's meeting. He comes up and he said, Boy, Pastor Howard, he says, When are you going to convert and join the Mac people? Because, see, I'm a PC guy. Like Christian, he's a Mac guy. <laughs> And, uh, and I said, uh, listen, I said, uh, in the words of Ellen White, when the majority forsake us, <laughs> when champions are few, <laughs> we have to gather warmth from the coldness of others, courage from their cowardice, loyalty from their treason. <laughs> but it's funny that we can, we can really fall into conversations about our stuff. But even amongst the ministry sometimes, we don't get to, hey, what have you been studying lately? Amen. You know, what has the Lord been revealing to you? What are your spiritual struggles in your life? The cares of this life, our stuff is something, brothers and sisters, that consumes us. Many of God's remnant people have a standard of living that makes spiritual advancement impossible in their lives. Both parents working their fingers to the bone while somebody else raises their children. Adventist people. Why? I got, I, got, I got this house to pay for. I got this car to pay for. Maybe you ought to downsize. You hear what I'm saying? I mean, I, I, I'll be honest with you. As a pastor, I used to work in the, in the secular job market, and now I'm in the pastoral job market. There's a pay differential there. So you, you're being consumed by the cares of this life. Statement in the book, Early Writings, page 56 and 57. If you don't have the book, Early Writings, Remnant prints the book, and if they don't have it, I'm going to recommend that potentially, you have some here, Dwight? If you don't, you have some over at the warehouse. By tonight, when people can come and purchase books, that, if you don't have that book, Early Writings, it is one of the most fascinating and powerful books, especially for the time that we live in. It will engage your full attention as you... It's the first book I read as a new Adventist Christian and, and have loved it ever since. In that book it says the following, pages 56 and 57. Houses and lands will be of no use to us, to the saints, in the time of trouble. I was shown that it is the will of God that the saints should cut loose from every encumbrance before the time of trouble comes and make a covenant with God through sacrifice. 
if they have their property on the altar and earnestly inquire of God for duty, he will teach them when to dispose of these things. Then they will be free in the time of trouble and have no clogs to weigh them down. I saw that if any held on to their property and did not inquire of the Lord as to their duty, he would not make duty known, and they would be permitted to keep their property, and in the time of trouble it would come upon them like a mountain to crush them. And they would try to dispose of it and would not be able. Now, in essence, don't go out and sell everything you have. Okay, don't say, well, that preacher over there. Th Here's what the council says. Put it on the altar. I, and I have been making a, renewing a commitment of this nature in my own personal life. Lord, everything that I am and everything that I have is yours. If you, want, if you want me to get rid of it, if I need to let go of it, then I'll do it. You're putting it on the altar. Now, God may not call you to give it up today, but when he does, be ready. God forbid the time would come when we could have let go of something and somebody could have been saved and we said, no, no, I'm going to hold on to it. And then it's just going to crush us out when that time comes because we're absorbed with our worldly stuff. Worldly possessions. Incidentally, in case you didn't notice, our economy is failing. And without the direct intervention of God, it's going to collapse. Okay? I mean, listen, brothers and sisters, everything that we've been talking about in prophecy is coming to play now. Amen. And we need to pray the Lord Jesus would wake us up to this time. Now is not a time to get encumbered with possessions. Then there's business interests. And I've had church members in every church I've been in who've been so busy with their jobs... Uh, incidentally, this may come as a shock to some of you, but Sabbath worship is not the only service your local church has. I hope, maybe some, you know, some churches have given up prayer meeting because nobody comes to it. I'm just too busy. My job's got me working. Then think about a different job. Listen, I've told my congregation, but there's only some, here's, here's something that's dangerous for, some, for us as Seventh-day Adventists. When you get a lot of light, you get so used to it, and it starts to fall on deaf ears. Sometimes I'm afraid to preach certain things because I'm afraid if I preach it too much, it's just going to keep hardening the hearts of the congregation who's already resolutely decided they're not going to respond to it. You preach what you want, Pastor, but I'm not going to cut you. Know, go ahead, try to guilt me, but I'm not coming out to pray. I'm not trying to guilt you. I'm just repeating to you the message the Lord has given to us as a people. I can't even let my family distract me from what God has called me to do. Now, is that what the Bible's telling us here? Well, this isn't popular today, by the way. That's why, again, that's why in the parable, Jesus knew it wasn't popular in his day. I've taken a wife, therefore I can't come. It's the only one he didn't ask excuse. I've taken a wife. I got family issues. You'll understand. Not even his family issues would divert Uriah from his mission. He wasn't distracted by his property, wasn't distracted by his profession or his family from the service of God. Uriah was a good soldier. David was entangled. Verse 12, then David said to Uriah, wait here today also, and tomorrow I will let you depart. So Uriah remained in Jerusalem that day and the next. Now when David called him, he ate and drank before him, and he made him drunk. 